I didn't get an opportunity to play for sport. But I've heard, I'm in the coaching profession. I get, we have a coaching clinic at uh, Hot Springs, with about 900 high school coaches. And you're gonna hear a sporty story every time. It doesn't matter. You're gonna hear them all, all there, all the time through those three days. Uh, one thing here is this, is Tim Horton, which most of you know Tim, he's at Vanderbilt, was at Auburn, he's been to Arkansas and every, every, everywhere. Uh, his last year in Arkansas, he was doing some spring recruiting. So he had to hit every high school in Arkansas. And he did a survey to find out where did everybody go to school? Guess what, for more coaches than any other place in the state was Henderson State. He said it was overwhelming and it's a tight bond. And like I said, I didn't get to play for Sporty, but I've had a lot of great moments. We coaches and players I play with, we stay in touch. We keep up with each other. You know, I heard Bill Parcells said this one time not too long ago. When one of us are hurting, everybody runs to help. I know, because I've been hurt before too. They've all run to help me. It was a great group of guys, just like your fraternity. And, and, and that's what football's about. I've been doing this 23 years. One thing I tell my players all the time, I don't remember what we did on four from one against Delta State. I don't remember what we did against SAU. But I remember the funny stories in the locker room and the funny things the coaches said and the, the great uh, camaraderie that we've had. And, uh, and I'm going to share a few with them. Uh, the first thing is this, and I get questions all the time about what is the funniest coaching story you've ever heard? True story. And this guy actually graduated from Henderson State. He, he will remain nameless. Uh, he got out of school here. He took him a little bit longer than everybody else. And, but he got out and, and got a job in a private school in South Arkansas. And it's just as normal as it always is. You know, a lot of private schools, the numbers are low. You know, parents are upset why they're, they're not beating Junction City or Rising or somebody, a powerhouse. So he was an assistant coach there. And by week four, they fire the coach. So he's coming over to see me. And uh, he said, you know, what do I do? So, you know, we're, so we'll just be simple. And we kind of talked it out. So he's sitting there, gets his game plan ready. And he goes down there playing smack on it. And uh, he's up in the press box because the only assistant coaches that he had one was an ex-basketball player, and the other guy, he wasn't even out of college. So he goes, he said, I'm going to the press box and I'm going to call plays. And granted, this guy was kind of a big guy, probably weighed about 350 pounds at the time. He's up in the press box, and he's up there, and a lot of coaches this isn't it's a good habit to have, kind of like sporty, he's chewing tobacco. So he's up there and he's calling plays, and they're running the ISO, and they're getting the ball down, down the field. And all of a sudden, he said, I see that safety creeping up. We're going to play, play action fake and throw it over the top. And so they play action fake. He is wide open and throws it and hits the kid in the helmet and bounces everywhere. Well, he gets upset. And, you know, when you chew tobacco, you usually have a spit can or a bottle. Well, he got really upset, takes it, and throws it. Literally, he did not realize there, there was no windshield. There was no window there. And so the, ball, the spitball gets flying out the, out the press box and he said, hit this big guy right back in the head. I said, what'd you do? He said, I did the only thing I could do. I got on all fours trying to crawl up underneath the, the table and they're down there, you know, coach, where you want to run? He goes, I don't care, just call something, we'll get this over. <laughs> and, uh, and he's a good one. I got a guy here tonight, Jeremy Burns. Uh, I came, like I said, from Pocahontas, Arkansas. And, you know, kind of like Coach was talking about the small school and, you know, didn't know if you belonged or not. And the uh, first day of practice, we scrimmaged, and I played linebacker at the time, and, uh, and, and Jeremy was playing offensive tackle. Well, the first play that we were in the beer and stuff, Jeremy hit me and knocked me about 30 yards backwards. And so I said, oh, man, I don't know if I'm ready for this. So the next play, he actually hit me so hard, I was landing in the parking lot, Coach, up there where y'all's uh, facility was. And I'll never forget, Coach Coleman and GA came up to me and patted me on the head. And he said, son, that's one of your snot those freshmen. That guy's all conference. And so uh, that was my introduction to Henderson State football. Uh, a lot of other funny stories is we talked about, I've got, had a bunch of staff members from Henderson State with me. And, uh, you know, one thing, you're always looking for a great line coach. And I had one. And, Coach Tad Stewart, he's still with me, does a great job. And uh, the funniest story about Tad, Tad knew to play every position. I mean, he knew everything. He, 
it was from Cabot, Arkansas, and, and you know, they don't pass blocking for Coach Malham and stuff, and he, he struggled with some of that stuff. But Tad knew what the center did. He, I mean, he knew it all. And so we're playing East Texas, I guess it's Texas A&M Commerce, and, and Coach told me all week, I was playing with guard, and he said, you know, you'll hook the three technique. If you'll hook the three technique, we're going to be good to go today. And I said, okay. So we go out there, and I hook the three technique. At least I think I am. I don't know if I did or not. But, uh, and so I come to the sideline, and I look at Tad, who was my future line coach, and I look at him, and I said, Tad, what is, what is wrong? And he said, well, Jeff, if you know Tad, he said, I said, I'm hooking the three technique. He said, and Prudhomme's saying he's hooking the five. And he goes, we are, but see, they've got too many in the box, and they keep rolling that safety down. Little did he know that our head coach was walking right towards him, and he never broke stride because my eyes were getting that big, and he goes, he's standing right behind me. And I said, I didn't say a word. I ran off and got a guy on the bench, and I heard coach told him, said, you, you play one coach, but he is it with me if it was an outstanding coach. Another funny story, Coach Burns, he was involved in this. He's, you know, we stayed at Goodlow, and then my junior year, they moved us over to Smith, which I loved Goodlow. I mean, it ain't like the roaches over at Goodlow. It was great and everything. And uh, I saw a couple of roaches with dogs in their mouths, but, you know, when you just became pets. And, uh, but they moved us over to Smith, and you know how curfew is. It's, you know, it's Thursday night, whatever, and you got curfew. So everybody's, you know, just scrambling, trying to get there before the coach gets there, and everybody's running. A guy named Bobby Alderson, he was from Mary, Mariana, uh, Mary, and he was about six foot eight, six foot seven, about 325 pounds. Well, Bobby's running late. So Bobby is taking off and he is sprinting. Well, over the, you know, he's not familiar with this door. Well, over at Smith, they had some shrubs on the side. Well, there's a big drop off, about a 10 foot drop off, and Bobby did not know there was a drop off on the side. He goes, keep saying, hell, hell. He said, Bobby, is that you? So we all kind of run down and help. And they take, uh, take him to the hospital. The guy broke both his arms. It was unbelievable. And so, you know, everybody's kind of worried about Bobby. He gets back from the hospital. And I remember, never forget his roommate sitting there. And he says, you know, he said, well, Kate's been good to me. He's done a lot of things for me. He said, well, Bobby, let me tell you one thing. And he said, I'll do anything for you, but I am not wiping your butt. <laughs> <laughs> In that part, but uh, we also had a, a, a character. He was a four-time All-American, and he was a, he was a punter. And uh, dang this thing, I mean, you know, you didn't really talk to the kickers or the punters. I mean, just you know, they counted when they went on the field. And, and this guy was a really great punter, but he had a problem. He liked to smoke. I mean, he was a smoker. And so he just what he did. He had. Uh, I got hurt just late in the year, and I got hurt against UCA and. I was sitting on the, you know, practice. I tore my knee up, and the punters over there, they don't do anything anyway during practice, whatever. He, I'm sitting there talking to him. It's kind of cold. I said, man, I need to smoke. I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, man, I really do. I need to smoke. And so we had this player, his grandfather, he used to always come down here, and he would come to every practice, and he'd sit in his van and watch practice. Well, he smoked. So next thing I know, you know, I'm kind of watching practice. And I look down there, and this guy's in full pads in, in the in the in the van, and they're just smoking <laughs> with the grandpa. I said that could only happen here, and uh, and those are some great stories. But Henderson State means a lot to me. I mean, I look back and had some opportunities to do some things, and the good Lord just put me at the right place at the right time. I came here, had a wonderful four-year career, got to coach here a year, and. You know, even to the professors, the coaches, everything. I mean, they took care of you, and you knew, you saw them down the road, or if you knew something, they were always there for them. And, and I mean, I've had some special memories, and probably one of the most special memories I ever had was our last game here at Henderson. We hadn't beat UCA in 10 years. And, uh, you know, we're rolling in there, and you know, it's kind of one of them deals, kind of like those guys across the street, you know, you're looking at their scores and all that deal. and. Uh, and it's the last game of the year. And we go down there and we jump on like 24 to nothing and end up winning the game 31 to 21. And walking off that field knowing that's the last game you played and you reached your goal as a team and look at those guys as teammates, your dad's patting you on the back as you're walking out, there's nothing like it. 
there's nothing like it. And uh, like I said, I had a lot of special memories here. I appreciate everybody coming out. I got Benny Arnold, Jerry Burns, Clay Arnold. I could tell a story on you. I'll probably keep that out. Uh, Coach Temple won't let me tell it. But uh, I'll tell you what, it's a, a thank you. It's good to meet everybody. And, and like I said, you know, if you're ever in Fort Smith, come by and see us. And uh, we got a lot of ratings running down there. I think coaches' assistants get tired when they come over there because we sit down and question them about things and just messing with them. But uh, like I said, appreciate y'all having me. Chris, I appreciate it. The honor to me to be able to do this. Thank you very much.